Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. I'm in the Lindy booth with John Thielen, and what we want to talk to you about is the new baits that you came out this year, but last year too, what you guys did was pretty revolutionary. So yeah. let's start with this year's new bait. Okay, well, I tell you what, number, number one, I spent a lot of time on the ice all winter long, and, and, and I've always been intrigued by different baits, and de- baits that do different things. And, and when we brought out the glow spoon last year, the idea behind the glow spoon was making sure fish can see it. Not only can they hear it, not only do they like the action, but I wanted them to be able to see it. And, and I'm talking clear water, dirty water, high light, low light. I think it's so important in ice fishing that they see it because what you got to remember is fish are meandering around in the winter. They're not actively running and feeding except for small short windows. So I'm a firm believer that you've got to grab their attention more in the winter than you do in the summer. Because I think in the summer, fish, walleyes specifically, are feeding all day long. You know, in one pot of fish or another, there's always fish eating. But in the winter, I do believe there's a big period of quiet time every single day. So I, with that being said, I believe that you got to make sure the fish can find your bait. Mm-hmm. So with all that being said, Glow Spoon. What was so cool about Glow Spoon was we put a light stick in there, we illuminated that bait, and we made it so fish could find it, no matter what the ice conditions or what the light conditions were. This year with the Glow Streak, this is the brand new one, this is a lot of fun because the thing about Glow Streak is now we're putting a light stick in a jigging minnow style bait Mm -hmm. so they can find it, but we're also incorporating that heavy action, that heavy rattle. When you jig the Glow Streak, it flies outside of the hole like that, and then it turns and it swims back. It's got a big two-out tail hook in the back, so you're not gonna lose fish. When fish bite, they get hooked. It's got a belly-hung treble hook. But like I say, the big key is that when you insert a light stick in that bait, you illuminate that whole bait. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden the fish can find it with that eyesight too. So now we're appealing to all their senses. So this glow streak, I mean, it's really cool. It comes in two different sizes. So you got a two inch, five sixteenths ounce, Mm -hmm. and you've got a two and a half inch, half ounce version. So so no matter where you fish, we got you covered. And the other thing I want to say is this, while it's an ice fishing bait, it's also a great open water bait. And I'm busy filming our open water TV right now for Fish Ed. And, and I'll tell you what, you throw this thing over the back of the boat, you cast it and rip it back, and what we're finding out is it's, I mean, like everybody's found out with all the different minnow baits out there nowadays, it's a fish catcher. It's a fish catcher winter and summer. Now with that glow, is that something that's an advantage, you know, certain types of water, or how, how does that really work depending on the water clarity? Well, I guess my opinion is this. I, I think in dirty water, glow becomes far more important. In low light conditions, it becomes far more important. But the neat thing about the glow streak that I'll tell you is you don't have to put a light stick in it. Mm -hmm. If you're fishing gin clear water scenario, if you're in a scenario where there's no snow on the ice, when we have that early ice and we have uh, lots of light down there, I think that when it comes down to it, the bait is just as effective without a light stick in it as it is with a light stick. But I don't think you can hurt yourself glowing a bait up, especially in the winter. You guys aren't the first and only people to put glow sticks in yeah. baits. What separates yours from somebody else? Sure. You know what? Other companies have put glow sticks in baits, but here's what is different. Here's where we are the first. We did not focus on just putting a glow stick on a metal bait and having the glow stick provide the, the actual light. When you look at glow spoon or glow streak, they're all the same color light stick. And we actually have a patented process where when we put that light stick in that bait, it shines light through in the color of the bait. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those other ones you're talking about out there, they are reliant on the color of the light stick. Okay. Okay. So you might get two different colors of light sticks. And that's what you got. You got two colors. Mm -hmm. But with the glow spoon and the glow streak, you get this whole color palette because we're shining through in the color of the spoon itself. And that's a patented process where we're diffusing the the chartreuse out of that light and we're just bringing the light through in the color of the spoon. So it's, it's a really neat process. So it gives you 14 colors in the spoon and 12 colors in the glow streak. What are some of those colors? What's your favorites? Oh man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> They're all your favorites. <laughs> right? They're all my favorites, right? <laughs> uh, uh, this year in the glow spoon, we developed a couple new colors. And, and I'll tell you why we developed these colors. If you look at last year, pink scale was the number one selling color. Fire tiger was the number two, and that's not really a surprise in ice fishing. Mm-hmm. But what we did this year is we have a variation of fire tiger here. This is chartreuse bloodline. So you, you get really the 
the best of everything. You're going to see that red line when you put that light stick in there, all lit up against a, a lit up chartreuse background. This one's pink dace. This is another variation on pink. Mm -hmm. So I think when it really comes down to it, I don't think there's a bad color in the lineup. I, I, I firmly believe that the colors we've built in are good on any given body of water at any given time. There's going to be favorites that we all have. I mean, I, but I, I'll tell you, a couple of the cool ones that I think that are a little off the wall that we've done, you know, this red craw. I think that's an awesome color for ice fishing day in and day out. But nobody's really done it where it fades into a pink on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really neat deal. When you look at this, this orange color we've done, this orange perch, I think that's, you know, a little bit different. And I'll tell you what, we caught a ton of fish on this orange perch last year everywhere we went. Now, if you ask me, what's that orange perch really emulating? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but I know this, I put a light stick in it and I whacked a lot of walleyes on Lake of the Woods on this orange perch. I yep. whacked a lot of them on that, this, this uh, pink shad. You know, I'm not sure what we're emulating there. But what I am sure of is they like the action, they like the rattles, mm -hmm. and I think they like the fact we glow it up and they can find it. I don't, I don't think that fish, when they decide to eat, I don't think they take off, get to a bait and say, ooh, that's the wrong color, mm -hmm. okay? I believe that when we trigger fish, you're triggering them with all the things you're doing. When they make a decision, they're gonna attack it. So ultimately, it's just about being seen, being heard, having the right action. Sure. And then the color to me is always kind of that last thing I change. You know, I'm, I'm more concerned with getting the right action, getting the right, you know, getting the right noise. And then from there, we'll glow the thing up and play with a bunch of different colors. And I will tell you this, and, and this would surprise a lot of people to hear, but it, this is how much time we put into the testing on these baits, whether it's a glow spoon or glow streak. The glow streak's been in process for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. The glow spoon was in process for a year and a half. There was a lot of pressure to try to bring them out earlier than I did, but I wasn't convinced we had everything right about them. Sure. When we got to these colors, we got 12 really cool colors to start with, and some are really easy. Fire tiger's easy, right? Perch is easy. But getting to the right colors at the end of the day meant this. There's just as many colors that didn't make the cut because they just didn't catch as many fish in testing. And, and I put a lot of effort into that myself on the ice and then with our whole entire Lindy team because ultimately we want you to be able to buy a bait, go out fish the bait, have success with the bait. And once you do that, you're most likely gonna buy more baits mm -hmm. and you're gonna catch more fish. And, they, and that's how I look at it. It'd be really easy to just throw a whole ton of colors against the wall, put them on a card and, and put them on pegs and, and people would buy them. Yeah. But I'm a, I'm a firm believer that if you really put the time and effort into getting it right, they're going to buy even more. So that, that's my take on color. Awesome. Well, our big part of our audience is the wheelhouse guys. The guys yeah. that go out and, and they're, I mean, you can move them around, but for the most part, those guys are kind of fishing the same spot. Mm -hmm. I think these play really well yeah. into that strategy. Talk about how these not only catch fish that are on top of you, but how they bring fish in. Yeah, the, the bottom line is I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in two things. Ice fishing is about bringing fish to you, okay? I, you know, I fish a lot from a snowmobile and a portable, mm -hmm. and I can't move fast enough to keep up with fish. It's impossible. You know, you hear about guys wanting to dry, drill 80 holes in a day and walk and walk and walk. I'll tell you the truth, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with it, yeah. all right? I mean, I want to just bring fish to me. The, the keys to bringing fish to you are noise, and the fish being able to see the bait. So again, you, you look at this glow streak, when you jig this out and it flies out to the side, it's thunk, 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 thunk. Yeah, that rattle is banging away. We're grabbing their attention with that. That's also creating a vibration that's triggering that lateral line for that predator fish to move closer. And again, back to, they can see the bait. So ultimately, yeah, for all those wheelhouse guys, I mean, I, I want to fish like you guys are fishing, yeah. okay? Whether I'm doing it out of a portable or, and I had a skid house on Mille Lacs for years. I own a wheelhouse. You just don't see it on Fish Head TV that often because it's an awful lot of work for me to do it that right. way. Um, but when it comes down to it, I want to fish that way too. So, so yeah, the glow spoon, you know, we got tungsten rattles in that. Mm -hmm. we're, we're making noise, making it so they can see it. So yeah, I do believe these are some of the best baits you can put down there to draw fish in. And then the last thing I would say to that is, you're, you're fishing a bunch of set lines, most likely, in your wheelhouse. There's nothing wrong with dropping a bait like this down there and just ripping it once every 15 minutes or so, because all of a sudden, well, you might say to yourself, oh, geez, you know, I didn't get anything while I was ripping it. You look over here and you got a set line going. Sure. You got a bobber down, 
you, you got a rattle reel going off and it's because you got that fish here and as that fish was moving toward that noise, that vibration, that glow light, it runs across a fathead minnow hanging on a frosty jig or something like that and there it goes. So I'm a big believer in doing things to bring fish to you. Yeah, what's the most optimal way to fish these? If you were going to describe to someone how to, how to really get the most out of this, what's, I, what's the way to do that? Here's what's really cool. When you look at the glow streak, you can fish it so many different ways. You can give it long sweeps and that bait will just swim and then come back to you. But one of the neatest things is when I start seeing fish in the area, I know fish are in the area, you can shorten it up and it'll just be short little swims, or you can just jiggle it, and this thing will just dance around down there. And because of its hook configuration with the big tail hook in the back and the single treble off the belly, it won't ever tangle up on you. I fished this thing all year last year and couldn't get it to tangle up. So ultimately, you can fish it in a lot of different ways. And like I was saying, even in summertime fishing now, I can cast it out a little bit and rip it back. So really what I would say is this, if no fish are around, if you're not seeing fish on the sonar, Fish it aggressively, work, work it hard, long sweeps, make it so it does a lot of swimming around and coming back. When you start seeing fish in the neighborhood, shorten everything up, okay? Once you're shortening it up, if that doesn't trigger them to bite, then just jiggle it. And remember this too, because you got a light stick in there and this thing's glowing and they can see it, you'll be amazed how often you'll come to that dead stop and that's when you'll get smacked by a fish. They can still see it and they still know it's there. Is there anything I didn't ask you about that you really think is important we should touch on? Oh, I don't know. You know, just just get a kid fishing. You know, I mean, you look at ice fishing, man, ice fishing's growing. Ice fishing's a lot of fun. I really, you look at our, our industry as a whole, between the wheelhouses we're talking about, the ice suits we're talking about, all the different things that you can do to make ice fishing comfortable, there's really no reason to just go with the guys. You can get the wife and kids out. You can do a lot of different things to get out and enjoy ice fishing. The wheelhouse crowd you're talking about, man, that's made that's made it really comfortable. Yeah. And and I'll tell you what, the other thing I would say is fishing in general, we have a lot of opportunities now. Um, there's a lot of lot of simple ways to go ice fishing. Keep it simple with the kids, you know, go catch some panfish. Cool. You know, do do some things that'll get them hooked on it because it's it's a great sport and it's growing by leaps and bounds. Awesome. John, thanks so much for you talking it. to us. Really you got appreciate it. it. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.